Hi all, welcome to another video. In this one we are going to be creating the open and close button for this sidebar so it uh, slides out, in, in, out, shake it all about. Um, it will be off screen when you first load the page so we'll have to address that and we'll have a button up here um, and then when you click it the sidebar will slide out and everything will adjust accordingly. Now we're going to be using JavaScript and like I said I have done it with CSS only in a previous video if you prefer to do it that way I know a lot of people prefer CSS only solutions um, and they are pretty cool but JavaScript is fairly simple and um, a lot quicker um, in my opinion but saying that uh, let's just get on with it right in here uh, let me see if I've got all the files uh, no so I am going to create main.js okay and in the index file uh, if we close that up here I have already included it um, I've just put a script tag in there source main.js which obviously refers to this um, now we've used defer. Let's make this a little, a little bit more readable. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay, uh, I've used defer so it waits for the page to load before before running the script. Else, if a part of the page isn't loaded that the script refers to, it will not find it, and more than likely throw an error. So. Um, yeah, if you don't want to use that, just put the script tag at the bottom um, of the page down here somewhere. Okay, so if you've seen the CSS version of this, you'll know that we put the button outside of the sidebar. So we close this up. So we had three siblings in the end. We had a, the button, the sidebar, and the content. Not sure why there's so much space there. Um, but this time we are going to put it uh, inside the sidebar. So let's do that. We're going to do open close button. Uh, we're going to use the button tag, and I'm going to use. I thought we'd find the right. There you are. No, you're not. There you are. Um, <laughs> we're going to use this. Uh, save. There you see, uh, at the top we have a plus symbol. Uh, if you did watch the previous video, and um, you will notice I used the times symbol and then rotated it 45 degrees like an idiot. Uh, instead of using the plus symbol and then rotating that. Anyway, I digress. Let's stick a ID in here and put open close button save. So that's pretty much it for the HTML. So we need to move over to the CSS. What this button is going to do is when we click it, we're going to add an active class to sidebar here. Uh, and then when we click it again, we're going to remove the active class from sidebar. So that's all the JavaScript will be doing. Then the CSS takes over and does the rest for us. So Firstly, I'm going to style this up. Let's move down here. Open and close. More haste, less speed. Open and close button. To start with, um, I'm going to position it on the left over here. Um, it will be over here when it's open, but when you load the screen it will be on the left uh, you'll see what I mean shortly so hashtag because it's an ID open close button going to display it as a block and I'm going to give it a width of 25 pixels and a height of 35 pixels then I'm going to do position fixed we don't want it to move if we're scrolling the page and from the left I'm going to say 20 pixels and from the top 0 
let's just see what that looks like. Okay. Um, let's give the background color transparent. Uh, border none and colour for the font is going to be steel blue ok and we can barely see it so let's change the font size it's going to be 1.4 rem there you go ok um, also I'm going to give it a Z index so it sits above everything quite a high number which is 20 I'm going to give the cursor the value of pointer so when we hover over it um, as you can see it tells the user it's clickable um, I think we're going to leave it there for now right the active class I'm going to just add active here save and I'm going to say let's move this down a bit sidebar dot active there's no space between them because we want this these rules to apply only when the element has a class of sidebar and a class of active so left zero because if you remember in the sidebar we gave it a position of fixed there it is and a left of zero but as I said when we load the page we want it not to do to be displaying so save uh, so if we remove the active class this minus 300 basically says move this 300 that way to the left which is the width of the sidebar so it's off the screen so if we remove the active class it's gone if we add it it's there and that's what the button will do add and remove this active class and show and hide the sidebar obviously also it affects the content over here so we need to also address that uh, where are we let's go down here so sidebar dot active um, because sidebar is a direct sibling to content we can use the plus operator if you want to call it that and say we want to affect content uh, we want the width in fact this is what we want as it is now so let's go down to the bottom let's just grab it rather than uh, typing it all out again look up here put it in there so we want the width to be 100% minus 320 which is 300 of the pixels the width of the sidebar plus a little bit of space uh, margin left 320 so but when it first loads we want the default to be just 100% in width and the left margin of 0 save that so it looks like this obviously you you'll have other things in here title and buttons or whatever but that's how we want it to load and then again if we put that in it all goes back to this now this button over here I want here and as a cross so let's do that uh, let's move up to wherever that there we go so dot sidebar dot active and we want to target the open close button Uh, what do we want to do here? We want to move it from the left 275 pixels I think mm, there we go uh, yep and we want to transform and use the rotate 
I don't want to just rotate it 45 degrees though because I want it to spin as it comes out so I'm going to do 360 plus 45 which is 45 degrees save and there you go so again we can this is what it will be like when we press the button but when we first load the page it will look like this so we want now to go over to the, the JS uh, the JavaScript and reference these so the first thing we want to do is make sure that everything is loaded on the page I know the defers there to do that but it never hurts document dot add event listener I want to listen for this first option here document object model content loaded so again waiting for everything to make sure it's loaded and when it is run the function and this function is going to contain everything we need so oh, firstly I'm going to store uh, the value of the open and close button uh, a reference to it in a constant called btn I'm going to say document document dot get element by ID and that ID is open close button I want to do the same thing for the sidebar so I'm going to call this one sidebar and instead of get element by ID because it hasn't got an ID I'm going to use query selector and because we're using query selector we have to indicate whether it's uh, a class or an ID so we have to put the dot in there say sidebar so now we've got a reference to both of those we can use them button dot add event listener but this time we're listening for a click on the button and when we hear a click we want to carry out this function and this function is going to say reference that sidebar we've just uh, that constant we've just created and we're going to use JavaScript's class list function and we're going to daisy chain onto that the toggle function so we say we want to toggle a class on and off of sidebar and that class is obviously active and that's your JavaScript done and there you can see when we if we inspect this let's go down to you can see sidebar there when we click it's added active click it again it's removed active that's what we do right if you don't want the slide in slide out animation then that's that's you done um, but I prefer to put some tra transitioning in uh, the first bit of transition that I want to put in is here so transition uh, the only thing we're affecting here is left so left 0 0.5 seconds and everything has to be the same if you want everything to slide out at the same time this to adjust at the same time everything we transition will have to be uh, well should be the same time so half a second to this save and that's scroll that slides out to get the button to slide out with it uh, we can do the same thing transition uh, left uh, 0.5 seconds and if you remember we also uh, where is it we also transformed it so we need to do that as well transform 0.5 seconds save and then you can see it it rolls out you'll notice that because we put the same timings on that uh, this is a little bit well it's not slower it just doesn't go as far as this because this button ends up out here 
when this scrolls out so you can actually get to it but nice little effect I like that but as you can see the content um, yeah not really fluid at all so we need to do that as well so we go down to content transition uh, the things we changed on there was the width width 0.5 seconds and also the margin 0.5 seconds save and there you go everything moves smoothly and in sync and that's pretty much all there is to it so I hope you've enjoyed this video and learnt something if you have please leave a thumbs up consider subscribing I've got more on the way and thank you very much for watching see you next time